coming up on Digging Into the Future. Uh, I think human being, you know, this is uh, um, the sort of need and uh, the level and uh, appreciation of quality is almost unlimited. Hi, this is Bill Barney in Hong Kong, and I'm today uh, with the CEO of uh, Vobile, Yang Bin, who's going to talk to us about a lot of the future trends uh, in the industry and give us some insights into what he sees happening uh, both in the video space, but also in the technology space in general. So, uh, Yang Bin, welcome to, uh, to, welcome to our studio. Thank you for having me. Just Maybe just to start things off, um, obviously you're a listed company in Hong Kong. Well, give me the, the two-minute sketch on, on what Vobile does, uh, just so for, for our audience. So uh, we are a software company and uh, running business, basically SaaS business, software as a service. And we help our clients, you know, the content uh, producers, rights holders, to help them protect their content, monetize their content, and also sort of market their content in the new era of internet. Do you see you know, government stepping in and saying, hey, listen, um, you're going to need a license to broadcast this stuff going forward? Do you, do you see that happening? Or do you think we'll continue to have these sort of networks that are open and unregulated continuing to grow? What's, what's your thoughts? Well, uh, the f- funny thing, you know, I mean, I think that what's interesting in life is uh, Bill, you know, you live, you always you know, learn <laughs> every day new. Uh, I was born and grew up in China. And I went to U.S. 1991, you know, uh, quite a few years ago, and study and then I work in Silicon Valley, uh, primarily in the video industry, you know, uh, from a technology supplier side for the cable and the satellite and distributors. Um, y- you know, I, I thought, <laughs> you know, one, I was struck, you know, by the power of Internet. Uh, and then the bandwidth allows video to go anywhere, like platform like YouTube, you know, and other things. Uh, it's very powerful, Facebook, Instagram. Um, and uh, what happened recently, you know, the regulatory stuff and, uh, uh, and people, you know, I mean, some of the individuals get removed from these platforms. Uh, it's, it's news. Every place, country, and the government, when some of the media you know, has such a power um, coming with a balance, you know, that might be necessary. And the other thing is about misinformation, you know. I mean, video broadcasting used to be a uh, special, you know, power for the television network and the media companies. Now, anybody like us, (laughs) you know, we can become broadcasting, (laughs) you know, the global, right? And you can say whatever you want. (laughs) And to audience, sometimes they can't tell what's, you know, true or what's, you know, not true. As you think about like the the new world as we're going to, you know, for the digital infrastructure guys that are in data centers and networks, last year probably couldn't have been any better in terms of demand, right? I mean, it's just explosive. Uh, So many of the the, uh, PTC members have been extreme beneficiaries of all this. Um, But what I would say is, do you see that going forward? I definitely think it's going to continue, you know, grow explosively. Uh, You know, just from our industry, uh, when we started, you know, I mean, the best video quality we can get was, you know, half of DVD or quarter of DVD. Then DVD came around. Uh, we thought that was great. Then HDTV. We thought, wow, that's a lot of bandwidth, yeah. right? And, uh, it's, you know, and 4K, 8K coming, yeah. all the video production. Uh, I think human being, you know, this is uh, um, the sort of need and uh, the level and uh, appreciation of quality is almost unlimited. Yeah. You know, um, uh, and I remember this being uh, those days when we were, you know, I was a video engineer developing HD, uh, you know, TV uh, product. Uh, there were marketing people coming and say, do we really need HD? You know, <laughs> this was when HD was $5,000 piece of TV, right? Yeah. HD, very expensive, you know. And uh, they say, well, DVD is very good quality. Can consumer tell the difference, DVD or HD? You know, um, I'm a firm believer of technology advancements. Uh, I just 
never even think about it. I say, yeah, you want higher quality things coming out, you, people's gonna love it. Yeah. Look, you know, I mean, after watching 4K, I mean, you probably can't tolerate HD TV anymore. Yeah. It was so low resolution. Yeah. So look at those bits and bytes and uh, the iPhone you're you know, holding, 4K video shooting. I think just the data got as a result created is enormous. Uh, you know, YouTube was, internet video was considered lower in you know, quality streaming. Now it's HD. You know, you can go even higher, you know, I mean, so, so I think demand for bandwidth and storage is going to continue to explode. And uh, everything part of life is digital. Just let's switch now a little bit to, to COVID, because, uh, you know, obviously you and I have been uh, dealing with it and uh, sort of hunker down here in Hong Kong. But, but what do you think? Uh, do you think the model, like the whole work from home, do you think this is going to be the way of the future? Or do you think we go back to sort of the old way of, traveling and seeing each other and, and uh, you know, because I think some people say, oh, we, we, we may be permanently in this model. I think the future, uh, the way we work and the communicate and collaborate, uh, I think, uh, you know, Zoom and all this distant, you know, kind of collaboration technology will be part of the life. Yeah. And I think there is benefit of that. I mean, we are rethinking of our office, you know, in the U.S. and uh, what's the future office going to be? Do we really need everybody come to you know office and fighting the traffic every day? Well, look, you know, I mean, we got our job done. Our revenues up. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't lose a beat. You know, I used to think, you know, if someone employee say I work from home, you know, I, I say, well, okay, well, why? You know, like <laughs> I didn't say it, but I was thinking, you know, at least if you work from home all the time, you know, I would have a question: Are you really working, right? Yeah. Uh, but I think this uh, COVID-19, you know, this whole year has changed me. Uh, I will be very comfortable in the future, even we return no normal, you know, have employees say, I want to work from home. But, um, but I think uh, human being, we still, you know, I, I think appreciate the human touch. Yeah. Getting together, have a cup of coffee, have a talk, chat, grab a lunch is different than just doing on virtual. I don't think the world is we're all going to stay virtual. Yeah. You know, until the days maybe we have all have a neural interface somewhere in our brain. <laughs> We're going to the truly, you know, matrix future, you know. But that's still, I think, far in the future. So now that you've, you've been a, a Zoom guy for, uh, you know, doing all this stuff, what, do you, what have you done in COVID that's sort of different? Like just uh, how, do you, how do you pass the time? Are you a video watcher or what do, what do you, uh, I mean, what's, I, I mean, I've been, I've watched, I think, more, um, movies uh i've watched all the academy award uh, winners and so you know i mean it seems like it's uh, for me it's been a media kind of frenzy for the last year but uh, how about you what have you been doing on uh do you do any of this uh uh well uh i'll tell you the truth you know bill you know uh, uh the um i had a what do you call it either collateral damage or something out of watching video because i said i was a video engineer uh, I work on the first generation of DirecTV encoder system, uh, which there was a lot of challenge, as I said, as a pizza box size of system, complex system with 13 processors running a one video encoding system. And then initially when we launched, there's a lot of, you know, issues, uh, you know, you, you bit rate control and blockness and all those things. So it was my job to stay in the lab to fix the problem. So I was sitting there essentially watching a movie, same movie over and over again without sound because I'm, I'm a video engineer, I'm not an audio engineer, so, and try to fix the problem. One of the movie I was watching that time was The Terminator. <laughs> so uh, so uh, through those, you know, you can say it's overwork. I would sometimes work overnight in the lab. So when I get home, I don't watch TV anymore. Yeah. You know, if I sit in front of TV watching, immediately I feel I'm working. I start <laughs> looking at the video quality issues. I couldn't, you know, get yeah. away with this. <laughs> so, so I had a permanent damage of, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like video entertainment kind of thing. So I do, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, go to just watch a movie maybe. But uh, uh, our business, you know, uh, is all about helping people, you know, deliver video content, helping video producers and uh, kind of rights holders. But as a personal, you know, <laughs> entertainment, I don't watch video that much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good. That's uh, it's probably uh, 
easier. They say it's easier to sleep if you don't have all that bright light in your face at night. Jengbin, thank you very much for uh, coming today and, and spending some time with us on uh, digging into the future. Uh, this is Bill Barney. Thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, our next episode. Thank you. Uh, thank you.